Not even one mandatory, not one title defense, nothing. I mean, what did Canelo get the belt and be like, oh yeah, I like it, take it back. You know what I mean? Like return to sender, like he had the belt for like two days, like, oh yeah, it looks good, nice, take a picture. Okay, I'm a four-time champ, send the belt back. I mean, seriously, people, what the hell? Like, you know, look, I already told you guys, these Canelo fans, salty as fuck, okay? And uh, by the way, by the way, I think every, maybe every Friday, we're going to do like a general news thing on the channel. And then like Monday, we're going to do different videos, different days between 8 and 10 p.m. uploaded. So whatever, I'll make a video talking about it. But today, today, today. Look, I'm not trying to, you know, to uh, be hard on Canelo or nothing like that, but, I mean, good Lord. Good Lord, he just won the belt, and now he vacates? Like, and then I thought about it. I said, now, wait a minute, hit the brakes, right? Wait a minute, back it up. I think Canelo has vacated more belts than anyone in the past 10 years. Now, could you imagine, could you imagine the Canelo fans if Gennady Golovkin won a belt, vacated it, Right? I mean, could you imagine? The bias is so real, okay? And these people are defend coming out in droves, like, defending Canelo. I mean, instead of fighting, like, a Bival, you know, or someone like that, you know, he goes after Kovalev, you know? And, and, and look, I would if he would have had one title defense, even one against a top 10, forget about the top guys in the light heavyweight division, just one title defense, I would have given him credit. But he's not a four-time champ, he's a three-time champ, and we know the fight was rigged, whatever. Who's counting, right? Whatever. You know, I don't know, guys. I mean, so look, today we're going to go to my group, Counter Punch Boxing Talk TA, okay? Come over there, send your request. I'll approve it, okay? We're going to check out Google. Might be kind of long. I'm in the mood to talk a little bit tonight on uh, on the old YouTube. So right here, facts. Canelo Alvarez vacates 175 belt, one from Kovalev. IBF stripped Canelo Alvarez of his middleweight title. Canelo Alvarez vacated WBC ducking fight with Charlo. Not a good champion, not a pound for pound at all. Prove me wrong. Now, vacated the WBC to duck Charlo. I thought, I mean, he ducked a lot of people, actually. You could just say the top, even even uh, Golovkin, he won what he won the WBC, I believe, from Miguel Cotto, November 2016. Check me if I'm wrong. That's like from my memory, whatever. Won the WBC. And then, you know, we know he vacated to avoid Gennady Golovkin, but a lot of people like to say, Charlo, whoever, doesn't matter. He, he avoided him. Okay, when you vacate, you're strapped for ducking mandatories. World champion, WBC franchise, duck champion. I don't know who made this. Tate Design Group. Check them out, .com. Now, Lomachenko, same thing, you know. Now, Deontay Wilder, you got to give him credit. You know, he didn't want that franchise champion bullshit, right? Don't blame him. Lomachenko took it. I was a little bit disappointed, you know. But, you know, hey, Lomachenko, he's got the resume to back it up. About to, about to fight Teofimo Lopez apparently in April, Okay. Uh, you will receive the witness protection belt. Now, also, didn't he didn't he vacate the belt, uh, the light middleweight belt? I know he was able to keep it going into the Chavez fight, but after that, he's like, oh, I'm moving up to middleweight, and I'm pretty sure he, he vacated that belt. I mean, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but my point is, I don't, and, and this is the real talk here, real talk. I don't think there's any champion in the past decade that has vacated as many belts as Canelo Alvarez. So how, how is, and here's my question to you guys out there. How is, you know, facts, okay? We're talking facts here. How is that, you know, being biased or hating on Canelo. It's not that. I mean, Gennady Golovkin, what, 2021 title defense, uh, title defenses nearly, or what do you, I think, I believe he tied Bernard Hopkins, the all-time record in the middle, middleweight division, and these people rag on Triple G for that. They dog on his dude for that, but Canelo has one fight, you know, WBO with uh, Kovalev, right? I mean, I, I think Kovalev's about, what, 47, 42, 47, somewhere in there. He's old. Kovalev's old. OK, you know, has one fight with him and they consider that a four time champion job. Well done. Pat on the back. Go Canelo. I, I, I don't understand it. But Gennady Golovkin again, you know, double digit, double digit title defenses. And he's the bum slayer. You know, this is all we hear this is all we hear. Uh, right here, we know. Breaking Canelo Alvarez vacates 175 WBO light heavyweight title. 
give us your thoughts. Well, you know my thoughts. Now, let me read the typical fan response, okay? The, here's the Canelo cheerleader. As a Cole, or as a, sorry, Canelo, Canelo fan, he said uh, this all along and moved up, move up, to, damn, these people need to learn how to, move up to fight Kovalev and win or lose, he will be moving back down to 168 and then go back to 160. All the creditable sides have Canelo pound for pound number one and there's no one even close to him. Crawford getting dropped because of amateur and or by an amateur, uh, which he actually didn't get dropped. Okay, that was a slip, whatever. Uh, Lomachico getting dropped uh, by a, uh, 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 it says semi-retired Linares. Canelo stands alone on the top. You know, been the only only fighting champion. Saunders or Smith would be a great fight at 168 uh, for May, and then back to 160. Well, what about this? Okay, I mean, look, I'm not even going to waste time demantling and just you know totally annihilating this comment. It's too easy. It's like picking on a kid. Too easy. So, why not? the trilogy with Gennady Golovkin. Why not one title defense in the light heavyweight division? You know, I mean, there's a million why nots. I don't understand it. And also, you know, Canelo winning these multiple belts, I mean, basically it gives him an exit strategy from any division. You know, he could go to 160, 168, 175, it doesn't matter. Catch weight, we know the, the Canelo catch weight. I mean, so basically, you know, if you're backed in a corner, you're in a division, you have a mandatory, or you have the best that you're, you know, you should be fighting, you can say, oh, no, 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 I'm going to move up. I'm going to move down. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I mean, that's what it is, you know? And, and, and it's not like Manny Pacquiao, you know, being, uh, you know, winning or having the most belts in the most divisions. It's nothing like that because, you know, he took on real threats and real challenges. And, I, and I've broken down his resume on my channel search. Go to my channel search Pacquiao resume. I, I made like an hour long video, you know, explaining why you know, all of his wins were legitimate. There was one that I believe I didn't really agree with. Could have been Margarito. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I give him at least seven, you know, probably six, seven of his belts or his divisions that were 100% legit. Canelo, I'll give him two, two out of four, but no way, not no way in hell, four out of four. So anyway, guys, let's go check out the group, the group. And then we're going to get to some boxing news too. So, but like I said, man, every, every Friday we're going to do this. We're going to go over different things. Uh, Steve Kim right here tweeting out, Eddie Hearn told me that they have made an offer for Charlotte to face Demetrius Andrade in 2021 fight deal if he wants it. No long-term commitment. Now, here's how I look at that. You know, Charlo was always saying, you know, oh, the best fighters are all ducking me. Everybody's avoiding me. I want the top guys. Give me the top guys. Blah, 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 right? Well, now you have it. Now you have it. So if Charlo passes on that opportunity, then, you know, hey, he, he did it to himself, right? He did it to himself. So that's how I look at that. Uh, and I wrote here, now I'm going to do a little fact checking. Uh, here's what I'm talking about. Canelo holding the record, the record. And I do believe this for vacating the most belts in, in the past decade. And that's not a good look. It's really not. We could read a few comments, but we won't. Uh, making sure you guys have enough salt for your holiday meals. Okay, Canelo, Fighter of the Year 2019, according to ESPN.com. Here, let me look. And I haven't even read most of this. I've read some of it, uh, but we'll we'll do it together. Let's see, Edward. As much as I don't uh, I don't like the politics surrounding Canelo, he did do a pretty damn good job this year. Beat Jacobs, who was a middleweight champion in his prime, more or less, and a light heavyweight champion, not in his prime. And under questionable circumstances, but still his PD. Okay, but I get it. But you look at what has Canelo truly done. He beat Jacobs. Well, Gennady Golovkin beat Jacobs. I mean, you know, so I don't know. And to me, Jacobs, I mean, he's, look, Jacobs has the, has the potential to be a great fighter, but he's a good fighter. He's an average boxer, right? Yeah, he was a number one mandatory and all that, blah, blah, blah. We all, you know, we know the resume, but I don't know. I mean, is that really worthy of making Canelo fighter of the year? And I'll talk about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a whole video about fighter of the year, 2019, all of that. No one cares, okay? This coward just vacated the WBO light heavyweight belt because he wants to no know smoke with prime, 170 by champs, no grandpas on their way out, <laughs> and has the audacity to post this. You make my day with this. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, he says, I, I can see it. Maybe uh, 
I can maybe see it for his matches against Kovalev or Kova and Jacobs. I mean, you, you can't count the Kovalev matchup. You just simply can't. I mean, that was like literally the worst fight of 2019. And, and you know, here we go. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, uh, what's that thing called? Spoiler alert. OK, for my 2019 video, it's going to be the worst fight of the year. That is my number one pick for the absolute worst fight of the year. OK, no way. Bud Crawford, okay, talking about TC, Terrence Crawford, did you just see his dismantling of that hard-punching Ukrainian? Hell yes, you did. End of story. Number two, Wilder, hell of a shot on Ortiz, Fury, survival against that cut. Loma, that's all that needs to be said. Number five, uh, Ruiz, first Mexican heavyweight champion, and, and I agree. Told, look, look you, get, you get my comment of the day, reward, right here. Look, we about to hit that boom like button we about to hit that like button okay canelo doesn't need his boyfriend defending his poor choices <laughs> well okay you guys get the idea but anyway come over to counter punch boxing check out the group okay motherfuckers don't want to see crawford seriously true now i've learned a lot about this i mean i i thought that you know the the ldbc what the hell ever community on uh on uh youtube I thought they kind of protected Crawford. I think some of them do, because I've, I've actually watched videos where they're, you know, obviously being a little bit biased. And But apparently they don't like Crawford. They like Spence, but I don't think Spence is coming back. Okay, I really don't. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, oh, this was the, the worst referee. Look, I'll tell you guys a quick story. I was covering the Mike Alvarado Juan Diaz fight. This is like three, four years ago. There's press. Okay, Lawrence Cole, the referee, we know him. His dad, you know, Mr. Bigwig, whatever. The only reason that guy got the job and still has a job mainly in Texas is because his dad is on the board or something. He's some high up in whatever organization. So Lawrence Cole, that's how he got the job. Anyway, I'm at the fighter meeting, and I have it on video somewhere. Lawrence Cole, you know, I'm there. It's Mike Alvarado, Diaz. Uh, I can't remember who else there. Uh, Juarez. I mean, all these like, really cool guys there, whatever. So anyway, Lawrence Cole is like telling them, if you don't do what I say, basically, I'll make sure you don't win the fight. You know, if I say break, you don't break, you're going to pay. You know, I mean, this dude was like, like literally threatening these guys, you know, with, with their with their career, with their livelihood. And, and I remember like Mike Alvarado's coach, uh, he was like looking at looking around at everybody like, you hear this shit? Like, is this guy really, you know, he was just being such an asshole. You know, so and then I was at a premier boxing champion uh, fight as as press. Once again, the Charlo brothers, they were doing the commentating. And uh, I think Jim Gray was there. I can't remember who was there. But anyway, he was refereeing a fight on the undercard and just a total bullshit stoppage. You know, it was like it, it looked like they paid him off. And this was on the untelevised version. So my worst referee, again, spoiler alert of 2019 would probably probably be Lawrence Cole. I mean, for 2019, I mean, there was a few, you know, questionable stoppages, whatever. We'll get into it on the, on the next video or, or that video. But but overall, Lawrence Cole is terrible for boxing. So there you go. Uh, wow, Showtime Boxing is failing. Uh, to new devs, as yours truly has never seen, the Charlotte Hogan fight on Showtime last Saturday only did 275,000 views. Wow. And averaged at a paltry 249. Both those numbers are the lowest rated premium cable buy rate that I ever recall. Yeah, Showtime is going under. Showtime. Oh, right here. This is a good one right here. You got Mikey Garcia. And uh, he's about to fight, uh, what's his name? Hang on, I'll find it. <laughs> Look, you guys with these memes, man, you're killing me. You got Canelo Alvarez, Adelaide Bird, and I believe that's his wife or girlfriend. Somebody did a little bit of Photoshopping. But who the hell is Mikey Garcia fighting? There's that Crawford fight, that knockdown right there. Boom. I need to go back and watch that knockdown with uh, Crawford. But uh, damn it, who is Mikey Garcia fighting? Wow, he's on the tip of my tongue. Fought Manny Pacquiao. Fought, uh, holy crap, Jesse Vargas. Here we go, Jesse Vargas. Okay, how about Mikey Garcia versus Progr nah, nah, look, this is old right here. Now we got Jesse Vargas coming up. So, uh, Terrence Crawford, blah, blah, blah. I don't, Crawford, I'm number one at 147. I beat the man who beat the man. Okay, Terrence Crawford. He, look, he's talking about Jeff Horn. Look, bro, look, I like you, Crawford. But you can't, you need to take that back. First of all, Jeff Horn did not beat Manny Pacquiao. Number one, number two, it's fucking Jeff Horn. I don't want to cut, it's 
freaking Jeff Horn. You know, so whatever. I think Terrence Crawford has a lot to prove at 147. You know, I mean, look, let's be real. He's a little bit small for the division, right? I mean, hasn't been in too many battles. I mean, but, but you know, I don't know. Right now, I mean, he, he has a great chance at beating any top welterweight. You know, it doesn't matter. Spence, if he comes back, Sean Porter, even Manny Pacquiao, you know, just any. Thurman, I mean, what the hell is Keith Thurman out there doing, too, on top of it? So, and right here I wrote effing facts, okay? Loma goes down in the Linares fight, and he's exposed, got a weak chin. The LDBC fangirls can't shut blank blank. <laughs> you guys know I can't cuss anymore, right? Shut blank blank up about it, okay? Crawford gets clipped by the underdog, goes down like Zab Judah knocking down Mayweather, and they don't say a single word about it. I'm talking about the bias on YouTube, okay? You guys know. Terrence Crawford may be an incredible boxer, but Jesus, he, he's the most boring interviewer I've ever seen. Watching him on first take just now, you would have thought he didn't want people to watch his fight. Very true. And shout out to you, my friend Eric. Okay, very true. I mean, Crawford, he's like, yeah, uh, I got a fight coming up. Um, <sighs> Omaha, Nebraska. It is so incredibly boring. I mean, I watched the best interview I've seen Crawford in was there was one live deal he did, and uh, he was like in his gym, and, and it was actually entertaining. He had, you know, maybe he was in a good mood, a lot of personality. And the other, it was, I guess, intellectually intriguing you know it was him and Andre Ward they brought up Mayweather and Crawford so yeah you know you know these guys out there acting like clowns and you know I'm not about that life I'm not going to get in there flash my money do this he's like I'm investing in businesses properties and you know things like that so I like hearing that but I'll probably shut it down in a minute here I'm just I'm checking this out shout out scoop you guys check out scoop Oh, here's a little bit of lost footage right here. Yeah, I was, uh, what fight is it? Yeah, I was covering the Charlo fight. And this is when I had my little interview with Polly Malinaji. Okay, and you had the whole Showtime crew there. Uh, and I was watching how they put together their set. And their set comes in like these plastic boxes, right? That Where it says Showtime, that desk, you know, whatever. And that girl right there with the brown hair, uh, she picked up Polly after the fight and like they drove off or whatever so that, i think that's like his sister or something like that so there's polly over there whatever charlo oh that was charlo and adams about to hit the stage you know whatever you guys get it and right here you got jeff horn you know about to have a fight another fight so you know i don't know honestly guys i don't know a lot about this dude um i forget his name even but i'm just not a big jeff horn fan you know and a lot of it is because I made a video with Jeff Horn and uh, after the Manny Pacquiao fight, and I just showed the cheating and things like that. I mean, I was being, again, being honest, and Top Rank gave me a copyright strike. I had nearly half a million, half a million views, and Jeff Horn actually wrote me, texted me, complaining about my video. I mean, could, could you imagine? I mean, how, just how weak is that, right? I mean, you're a big-time boxer worried about a little old YouTube channel. Uh, AJ Tyson Fury is embarrassing the UK. Should they spar to beat <laughs> Wilder? Yeah, apparently you, you got uh, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury about to team up, you know, to, to train, you know, Fury getting ready for Deontay Wilder. Now, Tyson Fury, like you guys know, just left Ben Davis. Uh you know, look, I think Tyson Fury is going to lose. It's all about the money now, and that's com that's it. That, that end of story. You know, we could get into it. It cracks me up. Certain people think Thurman is on the same level as Crawford. Thurman does not have the skill that Crawford does, and anybody with eyesight can clearly see that based on their fights. I have never been comfortable to say that I uh, personally guarantee a victory. But when it comes to them two, Thurman would get schooled completely. And look, you guys, look, you know the fight that I just cannot wait to see? Here we go, facts. Okay, Andre Ward rips Canelo. I'm boring. I guess fielding was exciting. Uh, the fight that I cannot wait to see, I mean, I am just beyond excited for. I'm going to make a video about it next, is the Teofimo Lopez and uh, Lomachenko fight. It's basically a done deal, April 2020. So we got, let's see, January, February, March. Damn, that's a long time. Four months. I mean, that's damn near half the year. You know, we got another, what, about two weeks in December here, and then fuck, four months. So it's like, you know, four and a half months, roughly. It's a long time to wait. But you know what? I'm excited. It's going to be worth the wait. Uh, wait. I'm going on record right now. Lomachico is going to clown Lopez. I don't know, bruh. I don't know, bruh. And this one right here. Charlo Harrison again.
Another fight that I cannot wait to see. Um, when is that? December 21st. Oh, shit, that's coming up, too. Cool. Yeah, okay, there we go. So we got a good fight this weekend. But, yeah, guys, look, I'll probably leave it there. But, again, come over to the group, Counterpunch Boxing, T-A-L-K, Talk. Okay, what is this? We'll end it here. <clears throat> okay, may the scorecards help you forever. Uh, and then it says, let me feel that right hand. Yeah, you don't need any help. You got the Pope right there. But, yeah, like I said, guys, my next video probably going to be Teofimo Lopez right there, as you can see, and Lomachenko. Teofimo, uh, right here, Teofimo Lopez uh, to Loma. See you soon. Yeah, Loma said, welcome to the club. See you in April or something like that to uh, Lopez. Now, Lopez, he's getting a little cocky. He's getting a little arrogant, so he needs to tone that down with the great, the great Lomachenko. All right, guys, sub, like. Drop your comment, whatever. Like I said, we're going to be making these videos probably every Friday, just going over all the news. And that about covers it. I mean, for the headline stories, that's about it. Canelo vacating. You know, you got the Lopez Loma fight announced. Uh, you know, Fury training for Deontay Wilder rematch. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, uh, Mikey Garcia going to the zone. Okay, Charlo uh, Andre, a real possibility. Okay, and we got the Harris and Charlo rematch coming up. I mean, so look, a lot of big things happening. You guys should be excited. 2019 was a pretty good year, you know, so we'll, like I said, we'll get that video in to a recap everything. All right, guys, leave your comment below.